Vacuuming and mopping. It's something we all have to do at one point or the other, but let's face it, most of us, if not all of us, don't really like doing it. That's where a robot vacuum cleaner comes in handy, and if this robot can also mop your floors, that's even better. And this is exactly what the Roborock S7 Max Ultra does, and even more. Let's take a look. Before I start, the Roborock was sent to me by geekbuying.com, so thanks to Geekbuying for sending this across. But of course, this does not impact my review, which always remains objective and unbiased. So on a basic level, the Roborock S7 Max Ultra is a vacuum robot that also mops your floor. But there's a lot of tech in this product. On the vacuuming aspect, it has 5,500 pascals of suction power, which is quite impressive and a rubber brush which minimizes hair tangling. But the more interesting tech comes in the mopping part. Roborock uses sonic mopping to vibrate the mopping pad at around 3000 times per minute and applies downward force to kind of mimic scrubbing and to more easily get rid of those stubborn stains. But not only that, the robot has the ability to automatically detect whenever it's on a carpeted surface and it does two things. The first thing it does is that it boosts the vacuum suction power to the maximum so that it can more easily suck out anything that's on the carpet. But more interestingly, it also has auto mop lifting, which raises the mopping pad so that it does not touch the carpet and get it all wet. With this feature, you can send out your robot to clean your entire house without worrying about carpeted surfaces and hardwood floors. It just goes in one run and it takes care of everything. For navigation, the robot uses LiDAR, which is the same technology that self-driving cars use, to precisely map your house and avoid obstacles and avoid essentially getting stuck. Now, the impressive technology does not end there. There's even more of it in this docking station. And as you can see, it has three compartments. The first one houses a vacuum bag. The second one is a water reservoir, which you fill with clean water. And the third one is a dirty water tank. And here's where things get even more interesting. Once the robot is done cleaning your house, it goes back to the dock for charging. But before it starts charging, it does a couple of interesting things. The first thing it does, it cleans the mopping pad. Starting to wash the mop. It uses water from the fresh water tank, but also it has a component that actually scrubs the mopping pad to clean it thoroughly. And then it flushes all that dirty water and sucks it up into the dirty water tank. And you'll see how that performs in my cleaning tests in just a bit. Once it cleans the mopping pad and flushes the internal system and then sucks out all the dirty water into the dirty water tank, it then automatically empties the dustbin on the robot itself into that vacuum bag. And the nice thing here, instead of having to empty this manually every time or every other time, the vacuum bag lasts one to two months, depending on how frequently you use your robot. So you don't have to worry about doing that yourself, except once every month or two. The dock also refills the internal water tank on the robot itself with fresh water from the reservoir. And when everything is done, it actually dries the mopping pad with hot air to avoid bad odors and mildew buildup. What more can you ask for for an autonomous, self-cleaning, self-drying, self-emptying, refilling vacuum and mopping robot? But does it actually deliver? Does it actually work well? And yes, it does. I was pleasantly surprised and I'll show you in just a sec with my cleaning tests. But before I get there, another impressive thing that I really liked about this is the application. The Roborock app is very well built, but also it allows a lot of customizations and you can set a lot of different settings. So let me walk you through the app. The first time you launch the Roborock app, you're going to want to add the robot. Just click on the plus icon on the top and simply scan the QR code on the robot itself. A quick warning over here, if your Wi-Fi password includes any special characters, remove those. The first time I tried to connect the robot, it refused to connect and it took me over an hour of trying a thousand things to get it to connect and eventually I learned that for some reason Roborock does not like special characters in your Wi-Fi password. Ironically, the Diet Pro from Roborock was already connected to my Wi-Fi password which had special characters. 
I'm not sure why the S7 Max Ultra does not like special characters, but make sure to remove them before you connect. And also it has to be a 2.4 gigahertz network as it does not support five gigahertz. Now, once you add that, the first time you send your robot out, it will make a scan of your home and then create a map. And then once the map is created, you can rename the room. So I've renamed this as living room. This is the bedroom. There's a bathroom over here and the kitchen. And you can create no-go zones, places where you don't want it to go, places to avoid. You can merge rooms, etc. Uh, this is the 2D version of the map, but you can also display the map in 3D, which is okay, cool. And then you also have a matrix mode, which uses the LiDAR sensors on your phone to create kind of a matrix of your house. Personally, I did not find any utility in that. I mostly keep it on the 2D mode. And then you can, of course, do a full house clean or specific rooms where you select, let's say, the living room and the kitchen. Or you can also select a zone and draw that zone on your map and ask the robot to clean that. But you can also customize a couple of other things, including if you want it to vacuum and mop, mop only, vacuum only, or customize, which I'll get to in a second. Within the vacuum and mop, you can also customize the suction power from maximum to turbo to balanced to quiet. You can also customize the scrub intensity and water flow from mild, moderate to intense. And if you wanted to take a standard route or a fast route, though, ironically, when I ran the test on the fast route, it took almost the same amount of time as a standard route. So I'm not sure what's happening there. And then under mop only, so if you don't want it to vacuum, but simply mop, you can of course do mild water flow, moderate or intense. There's also the fast route, standard route, or a deep route, which goes over the same area twice, which gives you a deeper clean. And then there's D plus, which essentially is the same, but the robot travels at a slower pace. It makes less noise. You can also vacuum only, and again, select the suction power. And an interesting one is customize. So when you do customize, you can customize, first of all, the sequence. Do you want it to start with the living room? But also, if you want it to only vacuum the living room with turbo suction power, and then go to the bedroom, and then do vacuum and mop with balanced power and moderate scrub intensity and water flow, and then go to the kitchen, and then mop only with intense and deep route, you can do that, and I found that quite nice. And then when it is in the dark, you can also manually click on empty to empty everything in the dustbin, to wash the mopping pad, or to launch the drying cycle. All of these are done automatically once it goes back to dark, but you can also manually trigger them. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of the settings which you can customize. Uh, there are schedules if you want to create a schedule for it to run on a regular basis. You can activate reactive obstacle avoidance and less collision mode, as I talked about before. And then under carpet settings, there's a couple of interesting things here. You can select dynamic lift. So if it detects a carpet, it will lift up the mopping pad, or you can tell it to avoid carpets altogether. Or if you have carpets that are waterproof, you can say ignore them. So um, then it will mop your carpets as well. You can toggle carpet boost on and off, which as I said, will kick the vacuum into maximum suction mode. And you can activate deep carpet cleaning, which will do a separate run of your carpets after the initial run is done. Under floor cleaning settings, you can tell the robot to clean along the floor direction. That's more useful if you have hardwood floors. So if you wanna clean along the grain, you can set that over here. Under dock settings, you can select mop wash frequency, and this tells the robot how often to go back to wash the mop throughout the cleaning cycle. Uh, and you can customize that between 10 minutes and 50 minutes. I had it set at 45 minutes because I don't really need the mop to be cleaned throughout the uh, cleaning run. You can select the washing mode between light, standard, and deep. You can enable or disable auto emptying and again, select between smart, which lets the robot decide what mode to use or light, balanced and max. 
and you can toggle auto drying on or off and select the duration between two, three or four hours. Now there's a couple of other things. I'm not going to walk you through the entire app, but one last thing I wanted to show you is something called pin and go, which was quite nice. It pulls up a map of your house and then you can drop a pin where you want the robot to go and then tell it to go there and then uh, initiate a spot clean to clean that particular spot. Now let's run this robot through a couple of tests, starting off with navigation. As I said, it uses sensors, lasers and LiDAR to precisely map your house and navigate and avoid obstacles. And as you saw in the app, you can activate obstacle avoidance. And in this test, you can see it clearly avoids the socks and slippers on the floor. However, it does not quite recognize the charging cable on the floor, so it just drags it with it. However, what I found quite interesting was the obstacle avoidance. And in this particular instance, while the robot was moving forward, I just threw my slippers at it and almost instantly, as you can see, it detected that obstacle and just moved around it. I've used this robot for several days and it has not gotten stuck a single time. So it has always managed to navigate without getting stuck, which is one of the more important things you want in a robot vacuum. To measure the vacuuming effectiveness, I measured 50 grams of rice and I scattered them all over the floor and I sent out the robot to clean. And then when it was done, I emptied its dust been and uh, measured how much of that rice it was able to capture and as you can see it actually captured 50 grams so uh, it was able to vacuum all of the rice on hardwood floors but more interestingly for me was the mopping tests and for that i did some stress tests it's not something you probably will encounter in your day-to-day -day cleaning so what i did i spilled some coffee on the floor and i also put ketchup and i let them both dry out over 12 hours uh, for the coffee i put a thin layer of coffee but then just for the heck of it, I also put a thick layer of coffee just to see if the robot is able to clean that or not. And I sent the robot to clean that floor. These robots are not meant for deep cleaning your house, but rather for your daily routine cleaning. But I was curious if it's gonna be able to clean those stains out or not. And to my surprise on that first cleaning run, it actually got all of that thin layer of coffee out in some of the thick layer and the ketchup, which are quite tough stains. Now the robot has no way of telling if there is a stain that's left on the floor or not. All it does is it ensures that it covers 100% of the area and it goes over that at least once. After it did that, it had ended its run and started heading back to its dock to charge. And of course, the tougher stains were still there. So just to see, can I force the robot to clean them and will it actually get them out? I manually set a zone for it to clean this entire area again. It took a while, but after some time, it got both stains almost completely out. And I was quite impressed with that. I, I did not expect it to be able to get those out. So I'm happy to see that this sonic mopping actually works. Another pleasant surprise was the mop pad cleaning. Now, again, I had seen the animations on the Robark website on how it scrubs the mopping pad, but I was a bit skeptical about that. So after it was done cleaning the coffee stain and the ketchup, the mopping pad was of course quite dirty, as you can see. I had the docking station clean the mopping pad, and this is how it looked like after the cleaning session. And again, I was pleasantly surprised. And as you can see, it almost cleaned it too well. So that was another impressive point. A third point I was a bit skeptical about was the mop drying. Now I do have the Roborock Dyed Pro, which is an excellent wet and dry vacuum cleaner. And I also did a review of that. If you're interested, click over here to check that out. In that review, I realized that although Roborock advertises hot air drying, it actually does not use any hot air drying on that model but simply blasts cool or room temperature air to dry the mopping pad, which results in the mopping pad on the Diet Pro not being effectively dried even after five or six hours of operation. So I was a bit skeptical if this is the same on the S7 Max Ultra or not. And to my surprise, it was not. It actually uses hot air. As you can see, I clocked this at about 55 degrees Celsius. And by default, it's set for three hour duration for the drying cycle. And I found that it actually dries out almost entirely after only two hours. 
So I ended up changing the cycle to two hours and I got the mop at about 95% dried out after only two hours. The drying is also fairly quiet. So um, unless you have the unit right next to you, you barely hear it. And even when it's right next to you, it's just a faint sound of a fan operating. Nothing too disturbing and effectively it's only for two hours, which is really nice. The battery lasts for an impressive 180 minutes, but if it does run out of juice while it's on its cleaning run, it will go back to its dock to charge and then go back out to continue its cleaning. So all in all, do I recommend this? I absolutely do. There are a few things that I did not like, but none of them are deal breakers by any means. The first thing is, while it's really nice, you can control the robot by voice commands using Siri, Google Home, or Alexa. Unfortunately, I found those voice commands are not that smart, at least with Alexa. You can ask Alexa to clean the entire house or selective cleaning. So you can ask it to clean the bedroom, the kitchen or living room. Uh, you can ask the robot to go back to its base or to its dock for charging and to pause or stop cleaning. But that's about all you can do. I would have hoped if there was a little bit more options there where you can ask it to vacuum only your floors or mop only or do both or even uh, to vacuum the carpets only since it knows where there are carpets but um, it's not a deal breaker and maybe hopefully in the future this is something that they could add third thing i did not like the water reservoir on the robot itself is not removable you don't even have access to it which again not a major thing but it would have been nice if it was removable or at least you had access to it so that you can maybe see when it's full or not or if you want to manually empty the water reservoir to be able to do that as far as i can tell there's no way to manually empty it at this point point. and the last thing which is i guess inevitable but when it goes back to the dock to empty the dustbin it's quite loud as you can see but that's probably inevitable so if you're looking for a robot vacuum cleaner that's smart, has the ability to mop your floors as well, I definitely would recommend the S7 Max Ultra. Now this is not Roborock's latest robot vacuum cleaner, that's actually the Roborock S8 Pro Ultra, but that one is a couple of hundred dollars more expensive than the S7 Max Ultra. And yes, it does have a few improvements, um, like it has 6,000 pascals of suction power instead of 5,500. It has dual rolling brushes instead of one brush. It has the ability to lift the mopping pad, but also the roller brush. So a couple of improvements, but in my opinion, not worth the several hundred dollars extra price tag. So for me, I definitely do recommend the S7 Max Ultra if you're looking for a smart robot vacuum cleaner that can both mop and vacuum your floors. That also has a docking station that minimizes almost to a maximum the amount of manual work you need to do each time. Definitely recommend it. Do check the links in the description to get the latest price at the moment you're watching this. Geekbuying.com do run regular promotions and discounts. So make sure you check the link. That's all for now. Let me know in the comments section what you think of the Roborock S7 Max Ultra. And as always, if you like the video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel as this encourages me to continue producing content. Until next time, cheers.